Hey everybody, Alex Smart here. This is how to choose the best route for your bicycle commute. Okay, so the first thing you wanna look at is the road type or kind of like what I would call the level of the road. We're talking about like maybe like going from alleyway to freeway. So really the levels are, you know, alley, side street, residential, business, um, highways, and freeways. Okay, so obviously I'm going in order uh, of scariness. <laughs> So alleys, you know, can be very safe, can be very convenient for a bicyclist. Of course, you want to watch, you know, for debris and, you know, don't go late at night when there's no lighting. Then if you really want like the kind of the safe route, you want to take like the side streets or the residential streets. You know, side streets and residential streets, really all you have to worry about is the occasional kid playing with the ball and it rolls into the street. You know, sometimes cars coming out of driveways. Then when you're feeling a little bit more confident, then you go to the business districts. You often have more parked cars that where people are getting in and out to go into businesses. They're not just leaving their car for the night. A lot of times in these other, in these safer areas, you'll just hit stop sign after stop sign. And you just kind of get tired of stopping at the mall. So you want to hit those highways or those major streets. This is probably one of the most risky situations. And also the other thing I want to point out is, let's say there's a multi-highway and it's like one of these eight, eight lane highways that they have a lot, believe it or not, in places like Los Angeles. What you don't want to do, you can legally get over to the left lane to make a left turn, for example, but you want to stay either in the right lane if possible or cross over to the left lane when you need to, when it's safe, when there's plenty of room. You don't want to be in the middle lanes because it's worse when cars are passing you on both sides. So in other words, you want to either be on the far left lane if you're going to make a left turn or in the far right lane. Believe me, when you get down the road, when you get have been bicycle commuting for three to five years, you'll start to feel that it's okay and you'll start, you're, you start to learn how to be safe. Uh, so the last thing would be freeways. Now, again, this may sound ridiculous, but there actually are quite a few places, especially in California, where you actually have to take the freeway. There's just no other way to get through. And in those places, actually, it's not that bad. Um, I know along the way to San Diego at Camp Pendleton, you can either go through Camp Pendleton, or if you're not um, wearing a helmet, or if you just want to take the direct route, you actually can go on the five freeway. And then the signs will direct you when to get off. It's usually only, I think it's only one exit. And I took it, and it wasn't that bad. You know, it feels a little eerie just because you know you're on a freeway. But, you know, there's a big shoulder, and uh, like I said, in those kinds of areas, there's usually enough of an infrastructure set up. Okay, so number two choice uh, is what I call bicycle area. Let's talk about sidewalks. I don't think you should bicycle on a sidewalk. It is legal in a lot of places. It's illegal in a lot of places too. Um, but it's just not safe. You know, there's a lot of driveways between buildings. Cars can jut out of alleys. You just don't have the same amount of time to react. I just say just get on the road and control the lane if there's not enough room. Which brings me to the next, next point. So once you get on the road, what do you do if there's no shoulder and there's not enough space for a car and a bicycle to share the lane? In that case, you have to take the lane. You have to do it. Uh, cars may honk at you, they might not like it, but you're following the law and this is actually what's required and recommended by most law enforcement agencies. Sometimes there is a shoulder, but if there's debris, if the shoulder's not wide enough, you still can take the lane. Now, if, there's, if there is enough room, then technically by law you have to take the shoulder if there is enough room. Now, I like to put the onus of that decision on the bicycle because remember, car, if you're a car driver watching this, remember that you may not see everything that a bicyclist sees. You know, they see cracks or debris or things that you would never see and they may feel that they need to, in order to be safe, to be in the lane. So give them the benefit of the doubt. Now, bike lanes are amazing. When you get to a bike lane, it is so great. Uh, of course, there still is debris, there still is the possibility you'll have to exit the bike lane from time to time. You still definitely have to watch for parked cars and do this in every situation. But um, always keep a space cushion on your right and your left. I always say when you're on a bicycle, you have to imagine a six foot uh, box around you like you're in a car because that's the space cushion required. Now, if it's another bicyclist crossing, then you don't need to worry about it so much. There are bike lanes now, by the way, that have kind of that buffer zone for um, parked cars to open their car doors. These are great. Um, so you have plenty of room, people are getting in and out of their cars, but you can still be in the bike lane and be safe. Now there's two kinds of protected bikeways that I, that I identify. Ones that are completely separate and ones that kind of have like the driveways and entrances and exits for cars. Obviously it's better just to have the completely separated ones. So these bicycle freeways are great. I hope we get more of them. I hope we get an interconnected infrastructure of them. I always say we need an Eisenhower for bicycles. In Los Angeles, we need, you know, two bike freeways 
within every 10 mile square going north, south, east, west, just a grid, a complete grid. We definitely need one going to the valley. Uh, as you can see from my Sepulveda traffic study video, that um, it's just not safe. Okay, uh, so the choice number three, the third choice you have to make would be road quality. There's a lot of cement roads out there. I know it sounds weird, but there's a lot of cement roads versus asphalt, which is the normal blacktop. So cement roads are the hard gray material and it cracks. It gets a lot very hazardous actually in places. However, asphalt is very soft. So what that, what that means is instead of the cracks, you usually get potholes. So it's kind of a trade-off. Drainage and gates, those grates sometimes in roads, be careful not to have your bicycle tire go parallel, go perpendicular to the grates. Um, there's debris, there's dirt and gravel. Sometimes garbage cans are in the way. Um, sometimes they're in bike lanes. Please do not put your garbage cans in a bike lane. So what about infrastructure? Choice number four is infrastructure. And what do I mean by that? I mean, eventually you're gonna have to make choices between, again, the heavily stop sign laden side streets and the, the more the highway style with the, the lights that you can time, the traffic lights. Now, after a certain point, I gotta be honest, I don't always take a street just because it has a bike lane if there's a lot of stop signs, because I don't wanna break the law, I wanna stop at all the stop signs, but there's just so many of them, and it's so hard to get a bicycle moving every 100 feet. But on a, on a big street like Santa Monica Boulevard or one of these streets, you can look ahead and you can see when the light's gonna change, and believe it or not, that's very important for a bicyclist, because again, you're conserving energy. It's You're creating the energy that's moving it, not a pedal on the floor. Uh, other things you want to think about is things like elevation gain. You know, you might have like, you know, hills if you go one way or flats if you go the other. So you might like the hills, you might want the extra workout, or you might want to just uh, take the easier route and have a little longer distance. You might start thinking about traffic patterns. I know certain cities and certain areas literally have a sort of a behavior. Uh, people drive crazier in downtown, we know this. Um, you know, the courtesy of drivers, the amount of dogs that are loose. By the way, if that happens, uh, I always get off the bicycle. So number one, you don't create a chase for them. And number two, you have a, a big machine, metal machine in between you and the dog. Uh, another thing you might want to consider is certain areas have like, you know, wind. You might want to look for streets with shade if it's hot. You know, you start to think about all these things, time of day. Um, be careful when you're going into the sun um, because sunset, sunrise and sunset are some of the most dangerous times because car drivers can't see you. So keep all those things in mind and you know eventually you're gonna use all these choices and you're gonna kind of come up with whatever's right for you. And that will change over time. You know, when you're beginning, uh, there will be a certain set of choices that you make and the further you go, you might sort of adjust those choices. And you know, not that one's better or worse, but you know, there's levels of safety and all these other things that we've talked about. So, you know, best thing to do is to, you know, get out there and do it, take some safe roads, tootle around, nothing too crazy. And before you know it, you'll be like me, you'll be going down Olympic Boulevard um, at full speed with traffic. <laughs>